Hello, hello. I'm Chris with the Legacy team. If you're familiar with Legacy's videos, we know that CNC has changed how we approach woodworking. It doesn't matter if you're a woodworking business or a woodworking enthusiast. With CNC, the average woodworker can now produce amazing projects. Today, we are going to be producing the entire pedestal bed project from beginning to end. And that's gonna be done on the machine behind me, the Maverick 4x8 CNC system. Unlike other CNC machines that may only approach certain aspects of different components, we're gonna be producing and manufacturing every single step of this project on Legacy's multi-workstation CNC platform. The main material for this project is ePay, and it came pre-finished at one inch thick, and we designed the entire pedestal bed project around the pre-finished dimensions of the material. So let's get started. The first components that we're going to be producing on this pedestal bed are the cross support slabs that support the mattress in the center of this platform. Now these components are all gonna be nested out of three quarter inch ply and we'll use the horizontal work table on Legacy CNC machine to perform the sheet processing application. Legacy's horizontal workstation can be configured for all types of table fixtures. Here we've set up a vacuum table system that will hold down the sheet with air suction. A common question we run into when people are learning about a vacuum table for the first time is, do we need to apply tabs or special hold down fixture to make it so that the parts don't come loose after we've cut them out of the sheet? The short answer is no. A majority of the time we do not need to create tabs that bridge the gap between the original part and the sheet or any other method in order to cut out the parts. Now there are situations that accommodate different material thicknesses and part sizes where you would use other techniques like tabs in order to hold the part in place during the machining process. The nesting sequence allows us to apply multiple cutting techniques to the same surface without having to handle the part multiple times. Here, for example, we're cutting out multiple hole patterns and cutting out the exact size of the parts so that everything key locks together with the bed frame. Next, let's move on to the rest of the components that are produced on the horizontal workstation. These parts will become the vertical supports that hold the headboard together. To hold all of these hardwood components, we swapped over to another popular table configuration known as a T-slot table. This type of table fixture allows us to quickly apply hardware and custom configurations so we can hold down different part sizes to accommodate different cutting applications. The clamps that you see being used here are Legacy's low pro clamps. They don't only clamp from the side at a low profile, but they also clamp at a downward slope, ensuring that the edges of the parts don't lift during the cutting sequence. Here we're able to apply two different cutting techniques to the vertical supports, drilling the hole pattern and trimming the ends to length. After a quick clamp adjustment, we're able to apply similar cutting applications to the rest of the headboard components. In this part, we bored out holes for threaded inserts that match the hole pattern of the vertical supports. One of the advantages of CNC is that we're able to optimize our tool pass so that the cutter approaches the material in a specific way to minimize tear out and to give us the best finish possible. Here, for example, the cutter drills on both edges of the part to minimize tear out before trimming the ends. The final headboard component is this top arch. This is unique though because this part was already cut to a curved face for a previous project and we decided to use this material to build the bed instead. This means we had to create a custom fence to hold the arch component square to the machine. And now we're able to repeat those same cutting techniques as the rest of the headboard components.
Now let's work on the platform components. These parts are also going to be produced on the horizontal workstation. These components are using the same clamping techniques as before, but are receiving different hole patterns and through hole pockets, as well as miter cuts on the ends for the platform design. Next, these vertical rails are required to overlap one another within the castle joint of this pedestal leg. These parts will require a two-step procedure on the CNC machine. First, on the horizontal workstation, we will apply the same clamping and cutting techniques as previous components. The next application allows the part to be mounted vertically along the edge using the X-axis vertical clamping system. Here, holes are drilled in precise locations so that we can attach the top mitered platform components to these vertical rails. This vertical workstation gives us full access to the long edge of our components, opening up an entire world of applications. The final component are these castle joint legs. This part will also require two workstations with unique cutting applications. First, we'll use the Y-axis vertical clamping system so that we can get access to the end of the part for the castle joint. Next, we'll need to mount this part in the turning workstation so that we can machine curved faces to multiple sides of this leg. However, the trick is, how do we mount this part perfectly within the turning center when one end of the blank has already received the castle joint? Going back to our horizontal workstation, we're going to create a custom hub that keys directly into the end of the castle joint. Here, we drill a hole through the blank that represents the center of rotation. Notice that the hole is offset from the cross section that is cut next. Having multiple workstations gives us the unique ability to problem solve and come up with solutions to everyday woodworking applications. Using this custom hub, we can now successfully mount this between centers, knowing that the center of the blank is perfectly aligned with the center of rotation within the turning center. Cutting techniques on the turning station are vast, because we can get access to every side of this part. Cutting techniques for this part alone was surfacing, scoring, roughing, and 3D carving. With all the parts cut out, we're now ready to perform the final tasks of the project, such as threading inserts. 
Let me pass you over to Tracy who has a few details about the sanding and finishing that took place for this project. So before we go assemble the bed, let's talk a little bit about the finish. Now the material is extremely hard and very, very dense. And so I used an 80 grit to sand it, and then I went to 120. I didn't want to go any higher than that because this wood is so hard, I didn't think the oil would soak in if I sanded it too smooth. So we stopped at 120. Once we had that, we have, of course, a lot of options on the finishes we want to use, or, or we can use. And we decided to go with a product called uh, Simple Finish from Maker Brand Co. But uh, you can get it through makerbrandco.com. So you can see the difference here between the raw wood and the finish. It turned out beautiful um, and it's really simple to apply. So all we'll do is, is you can use a brush or a rag. I, I actually originally used a brush, but I'll just show you. We can do the same thing with just a rag. Just wipe it on here like so. And then you'll want to let it just sit for about 10 minutes. At that point, We'd come back in and apply a little bit more oil, a second coat, let the first one soak in for about 10, and then let this second coat soak in for about 10 minutes as well. At that point, you go ahead and just wipe it really clean. And I let it sit for just a minute, and some of the oil actually came back out, and so I wiped it a second time to give us this beautiful finish. Now that we have the wood all finished. We let it sit for about a day to cure, uh, really dry and check to make sure there was no uh, wet oil left on, wipe it down really clean. And so now we're ready to go ahead and assemble the bed. So let's go do that now. During our dry fit, we found that some of the holes were really tight. And so we simply drilled out some of the hole patterns to make it easier to assemble. Again, having multiple workstations on a legacy CNC is unmatched in its versatility and capabilities. This is what sets Legacy apart. It allows you to say yes to more opportunities than any other CNC system. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Now these types of videos generate a lot of different questions. From can the machine do what I need it to do and can it solve the problems that I need resolved? To is this something that I can truly handle learning when it comes to software or how fast can I incorporate this into my business? And many, many more. I recommend you take advantage of two resources to answer your questions. First is head on over to our website at legacywoodworking.com. There you'll find all the different product information, additional cutting demonstrations, and much more. The second resource I recommend doing is actually getting in contact with one of our CNC experts. You can call them at 801-491-0010. They will be happy to answer any of your questions, put on software or cutting demonstrations with the machines, and point you to additional resources, again, to um, fulfill your needs. Now, if you'd like to just simply watch more videos, I don't blame you, just click right over there. I think we all know what to do. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, just click that button down below and don't hesitate to give us a like if you liked what you saw. As always, thanks for watching. And remember, Legacy solves more woodworking problems and allows you to say yes to more opportunities than any other CNC manufacturer in the industry.